I'm Tiana Atride, and welcome to Ride With Me, the show where we talk to people we love. I eat, I love food. About the places they love. Obama stole my special. Like, I've been ordering that. Love you, Mr. President, but... Today, we're catching up with actor Marcus Scribner from the hit show Blackish. Oh, I think literally every single thing that I've listed has been Black-owned so far, so let's go. Look at me. We're going to get his recommendations for L.A.'s Crenshaw area, and of course, I'll be heading there myself to check them out. So come along and ride with me. Marcus, how are you? Good, how are you guys? We're good. Do you wanna tell the audience where you're taking us today? So today I'm gonna take you guys down to Crenshaw slash West Adams slash Mid City area and show you some of my favorite spots. It's an area I grew up in Los Angeles, California. What I love most about LA is I feel like we have so many different biomes and so many different cultures and different types of people from different backgrounds that it really helps to make a well-rounded human being. I would just like hop all around town all the time and get all those different experiences. And I'd like to say it made me into a well-rounded individual, not trying to toot my own horn. My dad always said, he was like, I like it because we go back into our neighborhood and it's quiet and it's chill and you know your neighbors and everybody's like happy when we walk the dogs all the time. And then as soon as you step out into the neighborhood, it's like, welcome to the jungle. It's still a predominantly black neighborhood, which is pretty dope to see in the center of Los Angeles. Well, shall we head on to your first spot? So today I'm going to take you guys to Jack and Joe's. This is the best breakfast spot in the world. I don't care what anyone else says. Jack's and Joe's is the best breakfast spot on planet Earth. They have the best pancakes. They've got the like maple butter syrup thing. You know what I'm talking about. On top of the, you get the chocolate chip pancakes. Bruh, it's it's going crazy. And also, oh, you get the hash browns extra well done. It's over, it's over. You're having the best meal of your life. Jackson Joe's is like a USC staple. It's like a little bit closer over there. It's like Adam there. Your character, Junior from Blackish, is about to go on to yeah. college in Bronish. What was it like to kind of grow up with your character? When I booked the role, I don't think I could have ever imagined what was going to come of it. But like to be here now and being able to do what I love every single day as like a career is insane to me. It's surreal, honestly. And be able to look back and have tape of me growing up over time is really weird, freaky a little bit. Bye. Thank you. (laughs) So the next spot that we're headed to is Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. A bit of an LA staple. If you ever go to LA, everybody always tells you to go to Roscoe's. I mean, hey, even President Obama went to Roscoe's and they're very proud of that. Get the Obama special, you get the the waffles with the fried chicken and have yourself a good time. I see a lot of shade online about Roscoe's like, oh, the chicken and waffles ain't this and that and that. I'm like, shut up, be quiet. It is shocking to me that people are like sitting on Roscoe's. Roscoe's is the bomb and I don't want to hear any Roscoe's shade. And get her sunrise or a sunset. I always get them mixed up. The sunset comes with lemonade and for punch and then the sunrise is lemonade and punch juice. True, there feels like there's science going on here. Like when they used to like mix different chemicals and it would all sort of- Sugar? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Science. Obama has a special at Roscoe's. If you could have your own special on the menu, what would it be? Obama stole my special. Like I've been ordering that. All of a sudden they changed his Obama special when he popped out the cut. Love you, Mr. President, but I think I'd get the Obama special and then just add an extra waffle. Oh, just magnifico. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Do you want to go on to the next spot? Next up is Phillips Barbecue. Phillips Barbecue is like hands down my favorite barbecue location. I'm gonna get a lot of flack for that. I'm okay, I'm built tough, I'm built for this. The meats are pretty good quality and the meats themselves are delicious and I love them, but it's the sides and the sauce that just hit. You gotta get the mixed sauce. I love spice, their spicy sauce, their highest level is too it's too hot. So you get the mixed sauce, which is like mild with hot. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mild, mixed or hot? Uh, mixed. 
and you get some nice Wonder Bread, like I'm not playing. I'm putting refined carbs when I'm going to Phillips, okay? Thank you. Thank you again. Bye bye. Have a good one. <laughs> you bring it all together. You got the delicious, you got the brisket. The brisket be hitting. So we got the Wonder Bread with the brisket. You get the baked beans and the macaroni salad. You throw that on there, put a little bit of barbecue sauce, fold that up. My God, take you out, bro. Phillips barbecue, banger. You'll smell it from a mile away. I'm starving right now too. I just had a salad for lunch. If you want to go and take a ride with me, I actually can't sing. Ooh. I almost let the door hit me. Do you want to hit the next spot? The next location we're going to go to is Alta. Alta is really dope. It's black owned. Oh, I think literally every single thing that I've listed has been black owned so far. So let's go. Look at me. And it's somebody from the neighborhood who's come back and made this like really cool soul food restaurant. This is so pretty. I wouldn't say it's like a little bit like elevated, fancy soul food kind of, but it's not really, it's just like bomb, but it's like the setting is a little bit fancier than you would expect from a soul food joint. It's just the bomb, the best fried chicken. I like it because the chicken is moist, but it's not too moist. You know when you, it gets too moist and it's like some alien type beat stuff? Like, no, it's like, this is some real chicken, which is some good moisture and the skin is perfect. They got a nice hot sauce to dip it in, nice vinegary, that's what you need with a fried chicken to offset the grease. You're gonna get a little overweight with me, you know? I'm just over here, just, I order everything. I don't play games, I eat, I love food. The oxtails will take you out as well. Yum. And then you gotta try the cornbread with the, I love honey butter, so it's got the honey butter. So that seems to be the main thread throughout all these LA soul fruit. You just have to follow the cornbread trail. The cornbread <laughs> trail, that's where you get it. That's what I'm saying. Thank y'all. Oh boy. All right, do you wanna head on to the last spot? Our final destination is Gus's Fried Chicken. Let's go. Wait, why? This is kind of embarrassing. Every single one of my spots has fried chicken. Um, it really does. It says something <laughs> about me, I think. They're not closed, are they? Oh. Gus's fried chicken is the bomb. I think it started in like Tennessee or something, but we have a location out here on Crenshaw. That one's cool, that one's cool. And it's just a bomb. Like you'll be on the toilet for a minute, but it's the bomb. It's the, <laughs> the fried chicken is so good and like spicy, which I love spice. They got good collard greens. They have good baked beans as well. I love baked beans. I used to just eat straight up like Bush's baked beans out of the can, bro. Like I'm wild. <laughs> I'm about that life. Not this, Lord. Not bush beans out of the can. Can we just start with some baked beans as a side? And then... Oh, Christ. What we've learned about you today is that the common threads are going to be fried chicken spots and like community kind of spots. Yeah. So apparently the story behind this place is that it started as this like little place in Tennessee and in the back of this like small tavern and the community really, really loved it. But the family who ran it didn't have the money to open up their own place. So the community kind of rallied around them and raised a bunch of money so that they could eventually open their own restaurant. Wow. And now they're all the way out here in LA, so. Across the country, that's crazy. That's so sick. I was gonna say, can I draw a chicken or call it chicken? With our little crayons. Thank you. Not chicken Picasso. I've always gotten too impatient for coloring. Like as a kid, my mom would get annoyed because I never wanted to sit down to color. Here's my chicken. He's very colorful and beautiful. He's playing a little basketball, as you can see here. Basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. Where do I park? Oh, but dude, but dude, but dude. Oh, the door's too heavy. Why am I struggling? There we go. All right, so Blackish has just come to a close, which I cannot believe yes. either. I know you can't believe it. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, honestly. Like, I know the season finale I was very happy with and I was happy with everybody's response to it. It was definitely sad. I mean, I feel like I got all my tears out at the table read, though. Our last table read was like hella emotional. We were all just like crying. 
I'll blame my eyes since you're crying first, so. Obviously you're headed over to Gronish, but what else are you working on right now that you want people at home to check out? I started a production company and we've wrapped up filming on our, our first film. It's called How I Learned to Fly. It's kind of in the vein of pursuit of happiness. Really excited about that. It's a very heartfelt film. Thank you for taking us on a tour of Crenshaw. Congrats on everything, seriously. Great meeting you as well. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. I swear there's a thing, I feel like I saw somebody do this once, where you can like smudge the crayon and it makes like a nice, but it's not really working for me today, so we're not gonna get that fancy. Oh, yeah. I am out of the show, because I'm too shy. You can't judge a book by its cover, nor should you judge a wine, but I always do.